This is FBG Jen and FBG Kristen. And I'm FBG Margo, host and producer. You're listening to the podcast that will help you keep a lid on the junk in the trunk and inspire you to live a happy and confident life. Each episode, we chat with motivational experts and celebs and share our own candid adventures in being healthy. If you're looking for a podcast that's equal parts hilarious and enlightening, well then welcome to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. Welcome back to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. This is FBG Margo and on the line today, it's Jen. Hello! It's just the two of us because as we were recording this, Kristen is stuck in London. What a terrible place to be stuck, isn't it? I know, poor Kristen. Poor (laughs) Kristen. Well, she actually would be really bummed out because she is sort of the sports fanatic of this trio. And I think she would have really loved this interview. And I'm going to try to pronounce this name right, everybody. It's Akbar Bibasha Biamila. Yay for me. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Round of applause. If that's not right, someone please correct us. (laughs) So Akbar, and I got a chance to actually speak to him before we did the show, Jen. You don't know this, but and we were on video with Skype. He is gorgeous, by the way. Mm -hmm, Very, very sweet guy. And he's the host of American Ninja Warrior. And Jen, you've watched that show before. So what can you tell us what that show is all about? Yeah, American Ninja Warrior is so fun. It's kind of like, you know, when you're a kid, I think most kids did this. I definitely did this. You, like, set up an obstacle course, like, in your backyard or your living room or at the park or something, and you try to see, like, how fast you can, like, dive over couches. And Did you do this, Marco, as a kid? Oh, of course. Yeah. And then, like, you time each other and stuff. I mean, it's like that, except it's on TV, and it's, like, a real show, and there are all kinds of obstacles and water pits and they change the course all the time they go around to all different cities and it is a legit competition like I can't remember what the winner gets but you know loads of money and notoriety and the title of American Ninja Warrior I have to say it's amazing I I watched one that was set in Vegas the other night I was catching up on the episodes and I posted on Facebook how I I got to interview him today and my friend says my son is so jealous right now because he loves that show and he loves Akbar so he was a fantastic interview today and it's, it's such a great show so I just wanted to ask you like competition shows do you watch in addition to American Ninja Warrior so I obviously watch like some sports mm-hmm. you know I watch uh, I'm, a, I'm a big tennis fan I'm a, I'm a fed head for anyone that watches tennis I also watch some baseball although I'm a Kansas City fan so that's a little tentative this year and as far as like other kind of like outside like traditional sports I, I watch the CrossFit games I find the CrossFit games to be so inspiring because the things that they are doing <laughs> yeah. are just insane. Like, in what they, like, their muscles and their wit and their drive and their motivation and all the stories behind it. We've actually gotten to talk to CrossFit people, like, for, for Fit Bottom Girls, um, like Brooke Wells, and we talked to a few other people. It's just really, really, it's, it, that that is a competition as a sport is just growing and exploding and it's 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 really inspiring so I know for sure like every single time my husband and I watch the CrossFit games it's like for the next couple weeks after our workouts are just dialed up like a little bit (laughs) (laughs) because you're just kind of so you're inspired you're like well what what else can I do gosh so what about you Margo I I like watching the CrossFit games too and I'm a little bit like you as well and your husband like I'll I'll start watching them all of a sudden I do keep a 20 pound kettlebell in my living room and all of a sudden, I'll just got to solve. I got to do some swings. I, you know, I got to. <laughs> I didn't do enough what? swings today. I got to, you know, I feel like you get up your game. I don't know but, about you, but like for a while in the 90s and it, when I was back in college, I really liked watching the cheerleading competitions that they used to have on ESPN. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were oh, so God. dope. Yeah, they're so, they're so fun. Yeah. And those like, are true athletes, too. Yeah, because you have to have so much strength and flexibility and explosiveness to do anything cheerleading and you have to be like perky while you're doing it like smile yeah CrossFit you can like curse and have a you know beast face and whatever yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) you have to be like yay (laughs) yeah and so and I also I watch football I really love football I try to keep keep up with the baseball I used to be good at basketball but Kristen has me beat there but uh, I also like to watch some competition shows reality shows I don't really watch the talent shows so much But I do like Top Chef. I do too. And Chopped because, well, you get great cooking advice when you watch those shows. Yeah. 
You know, if we ever had uh, Ted Allen, would be a great podcast <gasps> guest. Okay, writing that down. It'd be great to get. He's really funny. We did a little bit of video with him for FBG like a long time ago, and he totally made fun of our name, which I thought was <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Oh, you, I, I just wrote his name down. Awesome. And did you know, by the way, I don't know if you were into this. I was totally into this back in the day, but Trading Spaces. Yeah, just a little bit. I, I was totally hooked on that show, and they're bringing that back with almost all of the – I mean, I don't know if you can bring the gang back together and if it works, because it's been about 15 years or something like that, but they're bringing that back, and I'm definitely going to check it out as soon as it hits the airways. That's fun. Yeah. yeah I do love to watch Top Chef. I do a little bit of um, – oh, my gosh, when am I totally blinking? You know, they use, like, uh, Blake Shelton and – Oh, like, oh, The Voice? The voice, yeah. I was like, all I could think of was America's Got Talent. I was like, that's not the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> I think I had American Ninja Warrior in my head. Yeah, I watch The Voice every now and again. Yeah. Those are kind of fun. Those are kind of fun, yeah. So today, Akbar, we were talking to him about the difference. You know, he was an NFL star for a few years. And we had, we, we had a really great conversation with him. We only had a short amount of time with him today, but we got a lot in there. And I was really impressed with his answer. We were talking about what was like how he changed his workouts after he left the NFL. And he really gave a more profound answer about who are you when you leave the NFL and you're like under 30 years old. And that was like your whole dream. And now you have your whole life ahead of you. Like that was your identity. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty deep. I thought he, you know, gave a really wonderful answer about that. Me too. And I think it's something, um, cause it kind of made me think about, I mean, really like in the moment I was like, huh, like it struck a chord in me. It's like, so what is that? I mean, that kind of, I think that applies to pretty much everybody in retirement. It just happened for him at a, you know, much younger age because you can't, you know, you, the NFL has a, a shorter career yeah. uh, span than like, you know, talking like we're doing right now you can do that for a long time you know but it's just like well what what does happen when you are no longer you know working or not doing maybe what you think your life's work is like that transition is interesting I I, I appreciated how candid and really truly how vulnerable he was yeah yeah I was, I was really part of five yeah yeah, and it was really cool because he said that he, um, his his new plan, or what he's working towards, like right now, is uh, possibly training to try to go through the American Ninja Warrior course. And he told us he d- he doesn't think he could make it. Like he's training to do the course. Because you were asking me off the air, do you think you could do that course? Like, are you kidding me? If Akbar can't do it now. <laughs> I know. Like, if he can't do it, I don't even think I can get past, like, the first, like, little thing where you just kind of, like, jump on the pads through the water. That's yeah. almost always, they always start, like, it seems <laughs> like. I'm like, can I just do a pull-up and a burpee? We can do that. But he talked to us also about his diet. So he's really into, he's into, into the Netflix, like we all are. And he's into the yep. documentaries, like we all are, or at least I am, I know. And he decided that after watching a couple of really important documentaries, that he was now going to be a vegan. And he's only been a vegan at the time of this recording six weeks. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting and cool. Because, I, mean, I don't know, you kind of like think about professional athletes and uh, celebrities and people on TV. It's, it's kind of funny to sit around like, and think about him just like pop it on Netflix and be like, I'm gonna watch a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's some popcorn, and then all of a sudden be like, Wait, is there butter in this popcorn? Like, I'm gonna go vegan. I'm not gonna, you know, do that. But it is a really cool way to get information. And yeah, I mean, I apply bottom for. I think change is always kind of difficult, but if you get inspired to do something, then do it. You know, a lot of times you just have to kind of learn and see like what's important to me, what works well with my body what are my goals exactly and and also he told us he's given up sugar which was he said and you might not hear it so well in the in the interview we got we broke up just a little bit on Skype but he gave up sugar and processed sugars you know refined sugars stuff like that and he said like two and a half weeks in he wanted to punch somebody he was just like thought he was gonna die like without the sugar yeah and you and I talk about this and then I he said it's it's so sneaky in all of our foods. And I told Jen off the air, there's this brand I won't mention, but I, it's this applesauce I like to grab on the go, you know, when I don't have time to actually chew an apple, whatever. But I, after this interview, Jen, I went and checked the package, and yes, it had fructose syrup. It had and, – and the stuff in there, I was like, wait, what am I doing? Like, apple is already sweet. You don't yeah. need to sweeten an apple. So, yeah, it, it wised me up just after this interview. Yeah, I know. I did find myself, too, just kind of, like, looking at labels a little bit more. Like, I even looked at the label of, um, like, my kombucha, which I, you know, like, I love kombucha. Mm -hmm. So I, I, like, turn it around, and I'm like, nine grams of sugar. Like, wow. Huh. And it's 
it's funny too because you can it's almost like you can like read a number and be like okay that's not that many grams or that's a lot of grams but if you really visualize what a gram of sugar is which is like a cube like one of the cubes of sugar yeah like, well you would never like pop nine of those in your mouth i would but i would like like spaz out and then pass out <laughs> i mean it would right. yeah it would be disgusting you know what i mean like it wouldn't be enjoyable but if you start to think of uh sugar in your food that way and yowzas it's something our parents didn't have to think about. I feel like it's something that started being an additive in food like 20 years ago or so. And then we all developed that taste for it. So when you take it out, it feels weird. Yeah. Because think about like, I drank a ton of soda when I was a kid. Me too. Like a ton. Like it was just something that was always there, was always present. And it wasn't until much later that it was like, oh, wait a minute. This doesn't actually make me feel great. Because you can kind of get away with anything when you're like nine. <laughs> oh, Sure. <laughs> when you're older, like, mm, this is not good. I should not be drinking something sugary all day long. It's a little hard. I mean, I've done it before, too, where you just gave up the sugar for, like, 30 days or whatever. And you do feel, like, so tired and so, like, I'm not going to make it. But then once you get through the other side, food tastes so much better without all that crap in there. And then, I mean, you just appreciate the actual taste of healthy foods because you basically – we actually talk a lot about this in the um, – this is actually a big part of the 10 for challenge, our little weight loss challenge that we do with Dave Smith. You can get more information at thebombgirls.com slash coaching. <laughs> but it really, you know, the, the first week because we do limit a lot of the um, – we recommend limiting a lot of the sugar to reset taste buds for this exact reason. And it can be a little bit uncomfortable for a little bit because your, your body's like actually kind of going through some withdrawal stuff where it's like I'm used to having this – Wait, I, I'm used to having quick energy, which is basically what sugar is. It burns really quickly. Like, I'm used to having kind of that, that jolt. And if you can't have it, then it's almost like your body has to refigure out, like, oh, wait a minute. Well, I could tap into, you know, my fat stores or something. You know, I could do that. It just, it's difficult for the body to adjust really quickly. But once you get through and then your taste buds change and all of a sudden, you know, stuff that you thought was perfectly, you know, fine for, like, a dessert is, like, almost too sweet, Yes. That's what's awesome is when you can taste the full natural flavor of, of an apple, per se. Well, I say we just get right into this interview today with Akbar. What do you say? Yeah, you guys enjoy it. He's great. Welcome back to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. NFL star, sports commentator, and entertainment personality, Akbar Bibasha Biamila, reigns supreme hosting NBC's Emmy-nominated America Ninja Warrior, which follows competitors as they tackle a series of challenging obstacle courses in both city qualifying and city final rounds across the country. He also currently hosts NFL Network's highest-rated show, NFL Fantasy Live. The Southern California native played five years in the NFL as a linebacker and defensive end with the Oakland Raiders, San Diego Chargers, and Miami Dolphins before retiring in 2008. He's here today to talk about his favorite healthy lifestyle and eating tips, as well as his popular show, American Ninja Warrior. Welcome to the show, Akbar. Hey. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? We're doing great. So this is FBG Margo, and on the line today, we have FBG Jen. Hello. <laughs> So, Akbar, I'm going to ask you the first question. So, let's just get right into it. So, tell us what it's like to host America Ninja Warrior. And my follow-up question is, do you ever get close to the contestants? You know what? Uh, close as in relationship-wise? Yeah, or do you, you find up like you really root for them. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's cool. You know, it's actually both. Um, I've got a chance over the years to really get close uh, to with some of the, the Ninja Warriors. But um, also, too, I, I think you find yourself invested or at least I find myself invested in a lot of the runs. And people ask, oh, but where does all this excitement come from and the enthusiasm? Well, it's just because I feel like I know these ninjas on another level because I either know that person or I am that person. You know, you look at some of these uh, amazing stories. Some of them, you know, they're, they're ordinary people with extraordinary stories and they find a way to go out there and compete at a high level. What they had to sacrifice. I mean, we've had competitors actually literally give up their jobs just to chase a dream of being a ninja warrior, getting that million dollars. But more so than the, the money, it's the culture. And there's something that I just love because in order to be great at anything, you have to be willing to sacrifice something. If you want to be great at making a lot of money, you got to sacrifice time. It's going to require something of you. And you think and use that to any part of your life. And so when you see what they've given up, maybe they've taken off of work or they've waited a month, close to a month in line just to get a shot. I think back to, you know, a competitor who had a wife in illness and he was the last walk on 
and he comes in there and he goes out there and he competes so hard he makes it to the to the finals and it's just like I, I respect that so there's a there's a there's a lot of love and respect for for guys like uh, and competitors like that that is so inspiring and i have i've watched the show for a number of seasons and it always like <laughs> makes me want to do something new you know like oh well i've never tried that challenge before <laughs> i'm dying to know like <laughs> Have you run through, do you get to run through the courses? And if so, like, how many times have you run through the courses? Well, unfortunately, Jen, I, I've not had the opportunity to completely run through them. I've done some of the obstacles, so I've, I, I call it spot run. I've spot run the, the course, but I haven't done all of it. Uh, and so uh, I've done, like, the combination of the floating steps and into the, the next obstacle, but... It's my goal and my hope that for our next season coming up that I will have an opportunity to run the qualifying round. Now, I, I've got a lot of more respect for these athletes. And so, you know, trying to do the full thing, I'm probably going to need a couple of years to train for that. But I've tried to partner up with uh, some of the ninjas like Flip Rodriguez uh, to train me. You know, I've got some workout sessions with Drew Dreschel who taught me how to lache. And, you know, I'm trying to work with as many as I've worked out with Jesse graph a couple of times and she just absolutely kills me um, <laughs> i finally videoed one of them and she made me look bad but that's all right because, um, you know never mind the gender line like an athlete is an athlete is an athlete and, and that's what i love about ninja warrior you know yeah. the same course that the men compete on the women compete on and yeah. so it's an equal playing ground and so yeah I, i'm not ashamed that i'm a former nfl player getting worked uh in a workout by jesse graph she has a lot to offer um that's why she's one of our strong competitors that's badass that's totally badass so i know playing in the nfl yeah. has to be so stressful on your body especially your joints so did you change the way you train after you left the league for a little bit i did because there's this thing that a lot of people don't know uh is that when you retire from the nfl there's this i guess sense of depression that sets in uh, many people have likened it to one who has uh, retired from work after 31 years in an industry or a field when you leave you kind of get this thing like who am i what am i you go through this identity crisis you know for so long since you were a young kid you've been identified as this athlete you've been you know through the same regimen for me it was from high school to college to the pros and i had trainers and the coaches told me where to be when to lift how to lift and it just became a part of my life so i would say for about a year uh, after i retired i still did a lot of the same workouts but afterwards i'm like it just hit me. I'm like, hold on. Why am I doing this? Why am mm -hmm. I putting my body through all of this stress? And I had to learn how to train again. And what do I mean by that? I had to train for what was appropriate for me. I wasn't, I didn't need the big thick neck because I'm no longer wearing a helmet on my head. I'm no longer getting hit by guys, you know, bigger than me or the same size as me. And, and that was hard. That was actually, that transition period was difficult. And Ninja Warrior, look at that. I mean, trying to even do some of the Ninja Warriors of having more functional strength. My strength primarily required me moving guys around, moving heavy weights. And that was it. That was the workout. Now, it was effective for what I did, but for everyday life, it didn't. So it was hard. I, I had a hard time. And I've now kind of gotten into a groove where I have my eating regimen down. I have my workout regimen down. And I do definitely need to step up the cardio because I get bored as heck uh, <laughs> standing on a treadmill or. Ditto. What about you mentioned eating? Um, so you're you're vegan. Can you talk a little bit about what made you go that direction and, and how that's kind of changed your your health and your outlook? Well, I'm going to say Netflix because uh, I think everyone's kind of aware <laughs> that Netflix they they do an amazing job with some of these documentaries and I just like documentaries. I, I walk called Sugar Coated uh, a while back and Sugar Coated kind of just talked about the dangers and harms of consuming refined sugars and talked about the 56 different names of refined sugar. And I realized then, I felt convicted after watching it, that I have a massive sugar problem. I mean, I was consuming sugar, three, four, 500 grams of sugar a day. Come on, this is all awkward. Come on, that's a little hyperbolic. No, 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 no. If you start adding it up, this, this muffin here, that protein bar there, that cereal there, that bread there. And I'm not talking about natural sugars from uh, from fruits and vegetables. I'm talking about refined sugar. And they've got 56 different names from high fructose corn syrup to mannitol to, uh, you know, tapioca syrup, tapioca syrup and all this other different types of names. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, like th this is a part of my everyday diet. 
and just cut that out. I lost 13 pounds. I wasn't trying to lose weight. I don't have a weight issue. I just lost 13 pounds because I decided to cut a refined sugar completely out of my diet. Uh, did that for six months and noticed a big difference. The biggest difference was I slept better. Then I watched this other documentary uh, called What the Health. And now there's been a lot of stuff, people debunking a lot of the information. I think some of the, the information there was exaggerated, but it brought enough attention to um, you know, eating a plant-based. If you look at the majority of people, and my, 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 uh, my nutritionist taught me this. If you look at your plate and it's brown or some, some variation of brown, then you're probably not eating healthy food. You're eating a bunch of refined, fried food. And I was like, you start thinking about it, very few foods that are brown is healthy for you outside of, you know, your brown potatoes or your, uh, or your brown rice. But, you know, you t- yeah. take any, like, the meats and the, the fried anything. It turns golden brown. And I thought, wow. So that's what made me turn vegan. I've been vegan for, get this, ready, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> yeah, I've been a vegan for, for six weeks now. So I'm going to make this a part of my life. I, I was really moved by the documentary. And I just think that it's going to be a lifestyle that works for me. And I'm still learning about it. So I'm still inquiring and understanding what it fully means to be vegan. At this point, I'm just cutting out meat, no dairy product, no butter, none of that stuff. That's awesome. So can I ask you this question? What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? And it could be about fitness, health, you know, life, whatever. What's your favorite bit of advice that you've taken? Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got that from my track coach who was training me uh, when I was preparing for the NFL. But I've applied that to every phase of my life, uh, whether it's my spiritual life as a Christian, uh, whether it's my professional life as a host or as a former athlete. You know, you're going to always go through these tough sugar. It was seriously, I thought I was going to die. D-I-E, <laughs> die. <laughs> it was horrible. I, I wouldn't wish that on my uh, on my enemy, like going through that two and a half week period, I was like, man, this is for the birds. Why am I putting myself through this? But I remind myself, tough times don't last, but tough people do. And if you'll just be patient and if you'll just hunker down, whether you're learning a new skill set or you're transitioning from the NFL like I did and into a new career or, or, you know, transitioning from, you know, working out a certain way or transitioning out of a relationship or whatever it is uh, through hard time financially, it won't last forever, and you'll keep your mind on the ultimate goal, that end goal that you have. You'll get there. It won't be easy. Nobody says it's going to be easy, but you'll get there. Awesome. So with kind of that in mind, so much good advice there. You're also a father. So can you talk about yeah. your kids and kind of how you help them to be, you know, to pass on your life lessons and then also lead a healthy, active, like feel-good life? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, because I, I, yeah, I, I don't want to, you know, you know, present something that is is untrue, and I, I would say that's probably been one of my hardest challenge is just getting the kids to be more active. There are a lot more distractions out there from t- uh, TV was kind of an oldie but goodie, right? right? But you could always just shut that off and go play outside. And there are all these devices and all these things that just kind of really consume the kids to where, you know, they're not as interested as playing. And then just the access to Uh, processed foods and just, you know, we're all so busy and it's just so much easier to hand them a bar or a package meal. So, you know, the idea of, you know, getting them, you know, healthier fit. My wife does an amazing job of doing her absolute best to get the kids, but I think we could have all together. I mean, I'm not just talking about myself and my wife, but I think collectively, you know, just taking care of our next generation because there's just so much more distraction. And they, you know, with emails, I just think about the emails and texts, for example, when somebody needs something, they text you, they email you. It's not, it's not just one person. It's you got six and seven and eight and nine and ten people yeah. trying to get things all done. And so what ends up happening is it starts to kind of trickle down to the kids as well. And, you know, just getting out there and get us. So my wife and I start saying, hey, look, let's go bike riding with being the kids, being more active. Uh, my kids just learned high fructose corn syrup. I taught them. High, so they're like, my son is funny now because anything he sees in a package, whether it's good or bad, bro, he goes, Dad, I don't want it. It's got a high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. That's the, that's the start. I'll take it. Yeah. It actually doesn't say that he can't read yet. He's five. He's still working on that. But uh, <laughs> he just looks at it and says, yeah, that's got a high fructose. And sometimes he's right. <laughs> yes, you're right. High fructose corn syrup. I don't want it. <laughs> That's cute. That's so awesome. So uh, we're, we're very cognizant of your time. So we have just one more question for you, but it's the most important question of the podcast. Are you ready? Okay, I'm listening. Akbar, 
What was the last song you listened to before you did this podcast interview? What was the last song that I listened to? Uh, it was Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror. Oh, nice. Oh, that is my husband's favorite song. Like, that was at our wedding. That yeah. is that is amazing pick. Well, it's funny because I, 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 uh, I have a Tesla, and they have this whole streaming thing, and you can create your own stations. And so I've created my own station. So if I'm not listening to sports, I have the Michael Jackson station on. So it's when I got out of the car this morning, headed to work, that was the last one playing. And I'm sitting there singing at the top of my lungs, uh, <laughs> you know, so. Well, Akbar, thank you so much for making some time for us today. You're a great interview, and I hope we can have some more time with you in the future. Absolutely. And I must give a shout out to a, a guy that I really like, two guys, actually, Lecrae, who's an, a phenomenal Christian rapper, and Chance the Rapper. Those are two of my guys. Yeah. So if I'm not I'll listening to Michael Jackson, one of those guys are coming on, Chance the Rapper or Lecrae. Noted. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, bye. Love this show? Tell us why in a five-star review on iTunes, and we'll read it on the air. Also, make sure you are a subscriber. If you want to reach out to say hi or have a question about a recent episode, yay, well, feel free to email us at podcast at fitbottomgirls.com. And if this podcast jives perfectly with your brand, consider sponsoring the show. Get more info by emailing advertising at fitbottomgirls.com. Find all kinds of Fit Bottom goodness online and on social media at Fit Bottom Girls, Fit Bottom Mamas, Fit Bottom Eats, and Fit Bottom Zen. And if books and movies are your thing, check out the other podcast I co-host called Book vs. Movie, which you can find anywhere where you search for podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.